Okay, in this next tutorial we're going to be looking at using, uh, well it's basically poly modeling, but uh, some people in the FreeDesk Max community refer to it as plain modeling as well. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is just to make a basic plane in your viewport in your front view. And if you use Alt X to make it go translucent, then you can use F4 to turn on wireframe. Uh, wireframe and smooth. So we'll convert this to an editable poly. And what we want to do is go to edge mode, select the end edge, just hold shift and drag up. And that's essentially what it, what plane modeling is. It's just about starting with nothing but a plane and extruding edges and cutting in edges using swift loop etc to make your object. Okay, so now we've got everything lined up that we can with those. So now if we add another loop in, we'll add a loop, a loop there. And then I'm just going to select these four. And in the top here we're going to pull them pull them back a bit. And then we'll select the top two. And we'll just start there. So I'm going to move them back to get them lined up. Grab these bottom ones. Move them there to get them lined up. Didn't change the shade. Uh, and these four, they're going to need to come right back here. Now I'm only moving in Y in my top view because I'm using my side view for lining up, so I'm not paying any attention to that if it's a bit out. You can you can go in between if you want, of course, as well. So I could say go to there if you. Feel that's going to look better. Just spend time on every single vertex, getting them lined up correctly before you add any more in. Okay, so then we're going to use Swift Leap up here to add in a cut here for the door. So now we're going to need one there. And obviously, the big thing we look at here as well, if we just make this big. Uh, you can see you've obviously got a very flat line here and this is curved off, so you're going to need that extra geometry in there to do that. Obviously this is where you can where you get an advantage from using splines, is that that will, with the curves, will define that curved edge without you having to add in any extra geometry. So the next thing we're going to do then is select these edges here, these two, and we're just going to hold shift and drag to copy. So we'll line, then line each of these up. So we can already see here we can't make the wheel arch out of this. So we're going to need to add more in. So we go to Swift Loop. And we'll add a loop here where the vent is. Let's pull that into place. And we'll add a loop here where we get this stripe. See now. I've got extra vets for also curving off that area I was moaning about earlier. There and there. Obviously, don't forget to go to your top view and see if you need to make any adjustments here as well. Actually, kind of all right there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is go to edge mode. And I'm going to select this edge. I've got my selection there. So we'll hold shift and drag up to here. And we'll place that there. Next we'll connect there. I'm just going to start adding in points to define this wheel arch and this curve around here. And again, make sure you check it's lined up in your top view. Uh, 
like I said, just be patient, make sure you use all of the available vertices before you add in any others. Okay, so again I'm going to add one there and one there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at, could carry on with the wheel arch, but I'm going to move back over to here. I don't know why, I just got bored of doing the wheel arch. So uh, I want you to drag that bit out, and again we're going to line this up with this next edge here. So we know these two here are our kind of side bits, so we know we need to line those up here. Like I said, I'm doing it all in one view first before, before I move on to the top view. You do have the option of doing one vertex at a time, so some people like to work like that. But I prefer to do it all in one view, and then move on to the next view. Okay, so that line does run straight back like that. That vertex there needs to come out to here. that actually comes right back to there and that one actually seems to come right out to there and that one can stay there ok so we're starting to get somewhere with this ok so we'll head back over to the wheel arch and carry on from there now so we'll hold shift again to copy now obviously you do have the option of uh, modelling in a slightly different way in that you scale this kind of up, get this down here and then add your segments in there. Or you can go the other way which is shift one, edit it and then shift another and so on. It's up to you and it kind of you tend to find you'll probably pick depending on whichever part of the model you're actually doing. I'm going to go down to there, then add one. So that's going to go up to there. Stay there. And again, just swift loop. I could have connected that. Back to vertex mode. So obviously like things I use all the time, alt X for changing between no, got a bit of an issue there actually. We didn't quite do that one right. That's what I mean. Always make sure you look around your mesh and check in that everything is right because if you're not very methodical about it, you'll find you miss something and then give yourself a lot more work to do later. So I'll line that up there. And now what I can do is actually just extrude down from here. When you're doing that extrude, sorry, I'm sure I mentioned it, but if you hold shift and then drag, that will extrude out. And obviously the big thing here is making sure it's aligned in the top top view.
And obviously a big thing is making sure you get this wheel arch right. And uh, one thing I do is you can snap in a cylinder or a circle to uh, help you line that up correctly. Obviously you can just use snap to line it up. So again I'm going to select these, go to there, so I go to vertex mode. Just pull these down a touch. Actually, I want that to get to there. Like so. Okay, so real quick, just for the bonnet here, let me show you a couple of useful things. Like, one thing is if I just select that. Obviously I can extrude out from there to do the bonnet. Another useful little thing though is you can actually use, if I go create shape from selection here, keep it linear, and then select the shape. I can now use the spline tools combined with the Uh, poly tools. So, like I was saying before, you can mix and match. So now I can just carry on with this and create a spline cage and just do a surface. As long as you've got it set to zero, I'll have exactly the same topology. I'll also just quickly show you that. So if we select this, attach, then do cross section. No, I've changed the shape a bit. Uh, apply a surface to this. And hide it all again. Make sure that's set to zero and apply it at poly. You can see it's got the same exact topology. Okay, anyway, so back to this. So we're going to clone an edge set here. And we'll wrap that up a bit. Obviously what we want that to do, this will eventually line up with there. So we'll pull it back. Go to vertex mode. And use target world on there. And obviously you can see we've got quite a number of vertices, so it's uh Even at this stage, it's a reasonable amount of uh, vertice editing you would be doing. We'll pull it down to there. So, then obviously we want to realign this in this viewport as well. If you only pull down a Y, you're not going to affect the lining of these here. Okay, so we've got our initial line. I might be able to actually pull these down a bit and pull them, pull them down here too. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do then is just what we did on the spline model. So for this time, we're going to 
scale up. Uh, extrude up by holding shift, pull it up, and then moving along and scaling in. So if we have a look at our model now, you can see we're some way to creating the base outline for this. So the next thing we're going to look at then with this model, first of all we'll mirror it and instance it. Uh, the next thing we'll want to do is set the smoothing groups. So if you go to polygon mode, select tool, just go all day smooth smoothing groups on it. Okay, so what about if we wanted to get in more detail, similar to, similar to um, our previous model? Well, obviously we would use a turbo smooth on this first. So apply a turbo smooth. And that's given us our extra detail level. But it's not as defined as the spline version. So to do use turbo smooth properly you need to use let's get turbo smooth leave iterations on one you need to use guidelines. So what we need to try and do is go to Swiftly well first of all let's just change the colour of this and more manageable and add a loop in the top and the bottom there. So now have a look at Turbo Smooth again, and you can see you now have that defined edge. Now if I wanted to make that even more defined, that if I just undo here, that's with the loops taken out. When you add in the loops, that's what you get. So uh, I can make that even more defined by again then again going into edge using swift loop and adding in one in the center just under that you can see you get even more definition so turbo smooth is all about um, adding in your divine lines like so